Cheryl Fox. Welcome to On the Red Dot. It's the final episode in our series, Friends for a Better World. And this week, we take you to Cambodia, where a social enterprise started by Singaporean there is making waves. Backstreet Academy collaborates with Cambodians who have a special skill and links them up with tourists looking for an authentic experience. The Ton Le Sap River cuts across the Cambodian capital, Phnom Penh. A skyscraper now marks the bustling West Bank. But on the other side, a fishing community quietly carries on with its simple way of life. Ramon goes fishing at the crack of dawn. The 29-year-old does this every day, wife and kids in tow. The boat is their only home. Ramon travels to the Mekong River to fish. The catch has been poured lately, barely enough to feed his family. His eldest daughter, Nori Sa, is six years old. She's too afraid to go to school, but is completely at ease on a boat. But having young children in such a small space means accidents are bound to happen. The son of a fisherman as well, Ramon was born on a boat and started fishing when he was 15. Ramon's best haul ever was 30 kilograms of fish in one day, worth about 150 US dollars. But that was during the high season, which runs from December to June. During the off season, even the best fishermen fall short. <laughs> To get his family through the low season, Ramon is turning to a different kind of catch. He now hosts tourists for up to four hours each time, teaching them how to fish for the net. I've fished before, but with the rod and the reel, and uh, when I was a kid, so uh, not uh, not with a net. I've always seen people fishing with nets, you know, on television, and a handful of times when I've traveled before, so I'm sure that it's not as easy as the people who've been doing it their whole lives make it look, so I'm looking forward to see uh, seeing how that, uh, how difficult it really is. So here, we have to separate one by one, one by one, to make sure that it is not stuck together. A translator helps Ramon communicate with a tourist. Ramon starts Carl on a small net that weighs 7 kilograms. The trick to a good throw lies in the intricate layering of the net to ensure that it opens up fully. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good one, a big one, <laughs> up in the net. So, we will stay, we will wait until the chain reach the bottom. Okay. And then we will start to pull it back. Unfortunately, the net is entangled down the riverbed. With the tube in his mouth as his only air supply, Ramon dives underwater to free the net. Minute by minute, the tension grows. About five minutes later, the net is free. Like the tube, these classes are a lifeline for Ramon. Each 
tourists pays 28 US dollars. More than half of that goes to Ramon. That's enough to double his income in these lean months. Not too shabby, huh? At the end of the class, Ramon shows Carl how fishing is done with even bigger nets, which requires two people. And then, a surprise. The Mekong prawn is a prized catch and can fetch up to five US dollars in the market. More than 30 people have experienced a fishing lesson so far. The highlight for many of them is a meal prepared on board by Ramon's wife. Even though Carl only caught two fish, the whole experience has been an eye opener. Coming on this fishing boat, I think you see uh, a little bit more of what it takes to make it in uh, this part of the world instead of just uh, the nice times that can be seen. It's more of uh, a realistic version of Cambodia. Um, so it's good to see and it makes you a little bit more grateful if you have a different lifestyle. It makes you realize how hard other people's lives can be. And I think it is important to try to speak with uh, the population as much as possible because again, if you just go and do the typical tourist uh, type of things, then you don't always get the opportunity to, you know, ask, so, what, you know, what do you think about this? Or, um, you know, what, what are your plans? Or, you know, what's your generation do for fun? And that stuff, too, gives you a better sense of, of a place. Ramon's family have been fishermen as far back as he can remember. But he says that he doesn't want his children to follow in his footsteps. <laughs> That dream is still far away. But for now, the extra income has enabled Ramon to buy a battery to power the boat. But it's not just about making more money. Ramon's friendly encounters with the tourists have brought in his wealth and given him a newfound confidence. Ramon's fishing classes is one of the many classes offered by Backstreet Academy. Up next, we follow its Singaporean co-founder, Jamin Mock, as he tries out new courses for the Academy. <laughs> back. Jamin Mock is one of the creators of Backstreet Academy, a social enterprise that helps Cambodians with a special skill earn a better living. By networking with others who are out to make a difference, this young Singaporean has set up shop in three countries and counting. Jamin Mock isn't your typical university graduate. Instead of joining the rat race, the 25-year-old Singaporean earns just 500 US dollars a month. So he can do something he believes in. Jamin co-founded Backstreet Academy in Phnom Penh and several other cities. It's a social business that matches poor local craftsmen with tourists looking to learn a traditional skill. Um, so this is our Phnom Penh office which we ran for $150 a month. And um, this is the logo I've designed. There's a letter B here and a letter A here, which stands for Backstreet Academy. And um, the houses here made of uh, zinc sheets are very typical of um, houses in the developing country cities that we look for. And the construction crane here, it represents development. Uh, and how these crafts, these traditions, these people, they're all not going to be around if we don't see them and um, see their crafts. Jamin hired a Cambodian manager so he could communicate with the locals. He now counts Kim Lee as one of his closest friends in Phnom Penh. 
Since last year, Jamin has spent most of his time away from home. I have been a very independent person since um, my parents have been uh, working overseas for uh, since seven or eight years ago. And I've always traveled alone, doing things on my own. Like you miss the friends, the family, especially Singapore food. And um, when you're in these countries, although you do make new friends and new connections, um, we are moving really quickly. So we have to change a new city every three months. And in a short time of three months, it's very difficult to uh, make new connections or in-depth friendships. But for the budding entrepreneur, feeling homesick and taking a lower pay are all part of the deal. Entrepreneurship itself is um, living a few years of your life like nobody would, so that you can live the rest of your life like nobody can. And it's not just in terms of uh, the money, it's also in terms of the fulfillment, the things you have done, the differences you have made to communities and to the world. Jamin is driving a quick expansion of Backstreet Academy. Since February, it set foot in Nepal, India, Cambodia, Laos and Vietnam. Aside from networking with local NGOs to find potential hosts, Jamin checks out markets like this one to see what products are on offer and who he can collaborate with. Jamin has been involved in social enterprises since his first year at the Singapore Management University. Last year, he and his Nepali friend Akash received training in social entrepreneurship from the Singapore International Foundation and won a 10,000 Singapore dollar grant. We are working in uh, developing countries like uh, Nepal. We found a lot of craftsmen who are earning very little, just making their products. And we thought that this program could immediately raise their income levels, uh, help them to gain confidence by interacting with people, and we could eventually um, invest in them as well. And for tourists, we saw for, from our own perspective how great an experience this could be, connecting with um, local people, uh, having a really unique experience, learning something traditional, something that connects with the local culture. The craft itself is uh, very important. Uh, it has to be interesting to tourists and somewhat intrinsic to the uh, country or the city's um, tradition and culture. What could be more local in Cambodia than eating tarantulas? These eight-legged creatures are a delicacy here. More Cambodians started eating them in the 1970s when the Khmer Rouge was in power and there was a shortage of food. These are doing the cooking, inside cooking. Mm. Okay, uh, Before Backstreet Academy rolls out a course, Jamin or his staff are taken through the whole process to make sure the best bits are in and the boring bits are out. It's licking juice, man. To appeal to tourists, Jamin is branding this cooking class the Fear Factor Challenge. We put ourselves in the shoes of uh, tourists. We will understand what they would want from um, this experience and then we would let the host know that these are the things that have to go into a course. We'll create a course structure for them to follow and we'll train them accordingly. The Fear Factor Challenge takes up to two hours and costs 16 US dollars per person. Most of the other courses cost below $20. Try to perfection. Uh, I don't know what to make of this. <laughs> the host gets about half the course fees. Backstreet Academy takes 10 to 15 percent. The rest goes to the translator and the tuk-tuk driver who picks up the tourists and sends them back to the hotel. Most of the uh, tourists, their time in every city is very limited and they want to have the best experience um, they can get for every activity they do. So we want to ensure that every experience is as seamless as possible and it must be an unforgettable memory for them. Good. <laughs> Pottery making, fishing and Cambodian boxing are among the most popular courses at Backstreet Academy. The business has yet to turn in a profit in every city. But the classes are getting rave reviews on travel site TripAdvisor. The Academy has been voted one of the top five attractions in Phnom Penh. 
Oh, it's nice to do something that is an activity with Cambodians. It's not just uh, tourists buying things from Cambodians, but we are speaking together, talking, learning about their lives, their culture, why they volunteer here. Uh, it's, it's just important. From strangers to friends, from making a transaction to forming a connection, all in just a few hours. <laughs> but the encounter benefits both sides for much longer. We see the tourists really having a very good time connecting with the locals. And when they have a connection, they continue to build on their relationship even after they have left the city. The hosts and the facilitators are also very, very happy that they get to know um, tourists all over the world. And their lives are significantly changed because of the additional income that they earn and the confidence they get from interacting with people and learning English uh, from the entire program. Now that's what I call a win-win situation. Up next, we meet a little man with big dreams and we find out how Backstreet Academy is helping him reach his goal. Welcome back. We've seen how social enterprise Backstreet Academy, through their collaborative efforts, has helped improve the lives of poor Cambodian craftsmen. But poverty is just one of the many challenges faced by our next profile. Here's his story. For the first 20 odd years of his life, Sokchi was jobless. Two bad falls in his childhood stunted his growth. When he was 17, a cow trampled on him, leaving him deformed and unable to do heavy duty work. <laughs> But Sokchi wanted to be independent. The turning point came in 2008 when he took a course at NGO Khmer Life to learn how to carve coconut husks. It was hard work. Sokchi almost quit. <laughs> The 36-year-old now works at the Khmer Life shop in Phnom Penh, which sells Cambodian handicrafts. He spends nine hours a day, six days a week, making keychains and ornaments. For that, he's paid 50 US dollars, or about 64 Singapore dollars a month, plus food and lodging. Sokchi is grateful for all of this, but he has bigger dreams. <laughs> Sokchi is now a step closer to his dream thanks to a new source of income. He's joined Backstreet Academy as a host, teaching tourists how to carve keychains and such out of coconut husks. As host, Sokchi is entitled to six US dollars per student. But because the lessons are conducted during his working hours, Khmer Life claims all of his takings. The Bank Street Academy pays Sokchi an extra one to two dollars per student so he can work towards his dream of setting up his own workshop. <laughs> Aside from new friendships, Sokchi is also gaining respect for his craft. When people actually uh, learn how to do it and see how they do it, they appreciate the product a lot more. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> and their skills and effort. And they see them more of like a master rather than just a producer of something. At 5 p.m., Sokchi returns to his room, a rundown shack that gets wet after heavy rain. A thrifty man, he hardly goes out after work. 
choosing instead to watch television or surf the internet on his phone. Occasionally, Sokchi gets invited to a wedding. He hopes to send out invitation cards of his own one day and has become friends with a woman online. <laughs> For now, Sochi spends Sunday with his friend Dara. They met three years ago after Dara started working at a nearby NGO. Today, Dara is taking Sochi to soak in the atmosphere at a fairground. The two friends talk about anything and everything, including Sokchi's future plans. Sokshi has come a long way from those days of being dependent on his family. Thanks to Backstreet Academy, craftsmen like him can carve out a better living. While tourists catch a glimpse of the real Cambodia. Locals and foreigners. United in a fight against poverty. Extending a hand of friendship to each other. And shaping a better world. The SIF's Young Social Entrepreneurs Program welcomes young changemakers to make friends for a better world. Applications for 2015 are now open at www.sif.org.sg slash YSE. If you'd like to relive this week's episode or catch any of our previous shows, just head over to these websites and you'll be able to watch it online. Till we meet again next week, I'm Cheryl Fox. Take care.